Welcome to session 16. And now we have Carol Argaskinski, and now I hope I pronounced that right, who is the CEO and founder of BIM Factoria. Now, as architects, the reuse of buildings uh, is going to become more and more pertinent um, as part of our role in sustainable building and sustainable design of infrastructure and buildings as we move forward. So the role of capturing information of historical buildings but also capturing information of existing assets is going to become more and more critical on every single project. Now, this is a topic that I think that we do cover on a couple of events in the past, but I also enjoy kind of highlighting this as a process because of the different ways in which people go about it as well. So um, I'll now hand you over to Carol to show you how they are handling uh, heritage buildings and capturing information using point clouds and and then bring it into Archicad and how they're utilizing it. So take it away, Carol. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, say uh, thank you to Nathan for bringing me here and being able to speak around such a great company of uh, specialists regarding Archicad and BIM. Um, so really quick uh, about myself. Uh, my name is Karol Argaszynski. I'm, ba I'm based in Warsaw, Poland right now. I'm a founder of uh, the company called BIM Factoria. We specialize in standardization, BIM training and laser scanning mostly. And uh, I myself, I'm graphs of certified BIM manager and professional. Um, we do a lot of scanning and thus, uh, because we work with heritage buildings, we work with, uh, um, with uh, digitization of uh, buildings themselves. Uh, we also work with uh, our partner, PointCap. Uh, it's a German company which uh, develops uh, really good software, which I'm going to also show today. And uh, we are master added value um, partner uh, of PointCap and uh, trainer and laser scanning specialist. Uh, because what I'm doing uh, in general, I'm an architect as well. Uh, I um, am working on the PhD right now, and uh, my dissertation topic is around heritage. Uh, so it's about virtual modeling of architectural heritage building information, so to speak, HBIM, heritage, historic BIM, however you like, through accurate data integration and classification. Apart from that, uh, the partners that uh, I'm collaborating with is uh, because I'm also um, fond of teaching. I, I like to do that. Uh, I work collaboratively with uh, Ziggurat, a global institute of technology where I'm an academic lecturer uh, and uh, on BIM-related stuff, as you can tell. And uh, also, since uh, I'm working with mostly open BIM standards, I'm also a member of Polish chapter of Building Smart, uh, where I'm co-creating and collaborating on educational room and standards around that. Uh, I'm also uh, wanted to say um, uh, hi to all uh, friends uh, from Krakow, from Multibeam. Uh, Multibeam is a Graphsoft partner in Poland. Uh, I'm sure Graphsoft staff knows uh, us. Uh, and uh, we uh, collaborate and have a partnership where I'm uh, working as a um, BIM manager for project teams, but also tutor for BIM software such Archicad and others. And last but not least, since uh, we're talking about education, we're talking about standards and all of that, I'm also uh, collaborating as a co-editor for Polish version of BIM Dictionary, uh, which I uh, quite recommend. It's very good dictionary when we talk about BIM acronyms, because we all love BIM acronyms. So just a quick thing uh, about BIM Factoria itself. So we deliver high quality design documentation. We mostly work with heritage and historic objects and structures uh, where we try to provide truly mapped BIM models for uh, architectural and historical objects and for uh, the use of conservatorship offices as well as our clients through the whole life cycle of the design. With that, we provide comprehensive project services from inventory to configuration of BIM model environments used to, um, I would say, supervise existing or design buildings or both of them, uh, mixed uh, kind of thing. And we also use latest technologies, an example, again, laser scanning, photogametry. Those are, of course, um, one of them. But in general, digitizing kind of unique objects and creating immersive historical BIM models, as well as animations and virtual tours, uh, if there is a necessary for them. And uh, the, our main mission, I, I like to say that, is uh, to provide high quality services, which comes from uh, years of experience with point clouds and object digitization, as well as working in a BIM environment.
So, what are we going to talk about today? And uh, we're going to uh, try to get most of the point clouds uh, for modeling and data management purposes. Uh, we will try to manage to use uh, point clouds for documentation and archiving purposes and automated drawings using tools uh, like PointCap Origins uh, Pro or, and for ARCHICAD plugin, which works with ARCHICAD and getting most out of the classification in IFC for heritage purpose. So <clears throat> a little bit of theory, uh, I mean a little bit, but it's actually going to uh, be a um, big part of the uh, whole presentation, but I think it's going to be very valuable to understand uh, what's happening and, and how it's actually happening. We uh, all know, uh, as architects and designers, we all know tape measuring and all of those uh, old techniques and how it can work uh, for us today. And uh, of course, uh, I'm saying we all know because we still use them, some of us, but uh, to us in Beam Factoria, it's like a survey of the past. Of course, sometimes it is necessary to check some things for scale or something, but we try to fully digitize uh, this kind of immersive process of serving. And uh, in that regard, uh, there are some issues that might happen on the way. So we might actually have problems regarding the uh, the whole uh, you know situation with uh, measurements, and there might might be the biggest uh, issue that we might have. It's a human error. We all know about that. And uh, to this, we might think about survey of today and a bit of future. Uh, so uh, for for uh, some of us, so this is uh, of course uh, laser scanning. This is digitization. Of course, not only laser scanning itself, but in general reality capturing. And uh, how this laser scanning works? Well, in basics, uh, we have a scanner. In this case, it's a Faro scanner. Uh, we use Faro uh, instruments, uh, and uh, but we also collaborate with people who use different tools like ZNF, Leica. So there's no problem in collaboration. And what's happening here, the scanner itself sends the same laser beam that we would do with a pointer, but uh, it makes it uh, very fast and it's not only one uh, laser beam, but it's uh, actually many different um, signals, let's say. And uh, that um, allows us to measure uh, the whole space that scanner sees itself uh, with, uh, within seconds and minutes. So, uh, of course, the one scan is not enough because we actually, for uh, specific use and specific buildings, to capture the whole thing, we need to do different uh, positions, we need to stitch them, so to speak, register, and in general, we are, we are getting a really, I would say, a comprehensive uh, method of uh, capturing reality, and this on the map, you can see, uh, this is an orthophoto map uh, where you see those old dots, and those dots are actually spaces where the laser scanner stands. So with that, uh, you might think, okay, um, so this is quite a lot of work. And it actually is. Uh, of course, you're getting a lot of data with that. It's not only 2D information, as you saw on the um, floor plan on the orthophoto before, but it's actually a 3D uh, kind of set of points. And there's millions and millions of them. So it's really... Um, it's really uh, reality capturing. Of course, uh, the scanner captures what it sees. So uh, that's why we need to do those many positions to actually capture the overall picture of what we actually need for a surveying purpose. And uh, of course, there are, if there are some parts which are not so necessarily, uh, we, we have this uh, thinking that we still need to capture it because it might be needed, or this, the, the subject of the scan might change uh, in time and we might not uh, be back uh, before it happens. So that's sometimes important to have this sort of um, digitized version of, of the building itself. And uh, of course, here you see uh, just a really quick flow animation. This is, uh, this is the output of the scan uh, that uh, you can get. Uh, and uh, basically, it serves mostly to overall purpose uh, for people who never was, uh, never were on the uh, site. So it's easier to understand. Of course, as I said, it's digitization itself. It's not only uh, the scanning, uh, the fancy scanning, but it's also photogrammetry. So you are able to create assets with your iPhone, with your uh, iPad uh, camera, uh, and uh, create uh, beautiful 3D models, basically, with uh, high re uh, resolution text textures, which can be transferred, for example, to ARCHICAD as GDL objects later on. So uh, just to mention, everyone knows the circle uh, who works with BIM. Everyone knows the life cycle of the design, the phases of design, building, and operating. But uh, the most important part is, yes, you can use laser scanning, you can use digitization, and you should use digitization through every single step of the life cycle of design uh, of the asset itself. So what about this Heritage BIM? Well, Heritage BIM is not so different from the BIM itself. Uh, this is uh, the graph itself. This, is, uh, pos this gives possibilities, uh, represents possibilities given by new methods of working with, uh, let's say, uh, with Heritage. So um, this one is adapted from British Heritage uh, England, CIC, and CIC is Construction Industry Council. 
And here you can see that uh, there are different, as we have been users in Penn State University papers, for example. So, so here we have uh, the sort of uh, impression of where we actually could use the HBIM itself. And of course, it's also a, a specific life cycle of the um, design or of the research around the building, uh, because in this case, we focus on uh, identifications, researching, determining options to the, um, to the sacred, so to speak, uh, tissue of heritage building. Uh, we defined the survey uh, and later on the interventions. Uh, we do a physical interventions and there's a handover of uh, the building and documentation as well. And uh, then we can work on operation and the future of the asset itself if all of the previous steps are done correctly. And this scanning and reality capturing can help. So a little bit about how the process can work for you, how it works for us. So uh, he, of course you always have when it comes to any building, but specifically when it comes to heritage asset, you need to um, get the semantic uh, database. You need to get information which are about the specific building, the specific field, the specific case that you're working on. And uh, later on, if we talk about the HBIM process itself as a creation, it actually uh, didn't happen, uh, don't, don't, do not happen here, uh, because it's we are still in the face of gaining data on actually acquiring the information. So we did semantics, we got all the archive papers, let's say, we got archive documentation, if there is any, uh, in most cases there are none, if we're talking about um, uh, assets in uh, in Poland, for example, but uh, there are, of course, um, the the archive states that has uh, specific documentation that have specific documentation. So here we're speaking about the survey itself and how it works. As I said, three D laser scanning, photogrammetry, gathering photos, uh, making uh, taking GPS uh, measurements and for georeferencing, so we need then to process, align, and register all the information together, which gives us combined point cloud. And then we can actually do some selection on the point cloud, what we actually need, some cleaning on it, and then this kind of optimized point cloud uh, can be served for uh, creating the actual point cloud documentation or the actually uh, digitized documentation of our asset. So to speak, the point cloud like this, for example, uh, can be used to, you know, uh, reconstruct, and that's how it was used in this case, uh, reconstruct uh, the, uh, you know, the whole wooden structure of the inner um, uh, space of this Grange building, for example. So uh, after uh, semantics and after spatial survey, we have the glorious time to work on building information model creation. And uh, here we do basic modeling with all the elements that we have in our portfolio and our favorite software. Uh, in this case, it's ARCHICAD. And uh, we do a lot of profiling and library parts creation. They are always individual since every heritage asset has its individual um, in most cases, uh, library, so to speak. Uh, I have this hinge, and I think many people have it. When we're going into the building, into the structure, we're thinking how the specific elements are going to be constru constructed in ARCHICAD. I don't know if you have it, probably you have it as well. So, um, yeah. And then uh, there's some kind of modeling automation because uh, some elements can be, of course, automated, like topography, trusses, uh, roof structural framing, and so on and so forth. And then we add metadata to the model. So all of those semantics, the non-digitized documents that were digitized for us, we're adding this information and thus we create an HBIM model and we prepare it for IFC, for 3D and 2D output documentation. So here just that explicit that of course, from a low level of geometry, uh, we created this sort of, um, you know, uh, the simplified model because it was needed back then. So as I said, we create a lot of uh, elements. We also create a specific classification, but about that in a second. And that classification serves us to um, specific um, views, for example, smart views in uh, BIM College Zoom. Of course, it can work in any software that can provide you those kind of views, like for example, graphical overrides in ARCHICAD, uh, which we're also going to talk about a bit. Uh, but uh, uh, this is how this is how it is. Okay, so this whole digitization, how it actually should be done. Well, uh, we're going into this digital building building survey, and here is one of the processes, one of the projects that we work on. I'm showing this specific uh, drawing. It's an old synagogue in Poland. I'm showing this uh, specific drawing because this is the the only specific drawing. Uh, from the original documentation. By original, I mean the old documentation from 1950s, because uh, in general there was none. There was only semantics, there were only books, uh, and uh, some kind of archival documents which contains, I don't know, 10 pages of text. That's all about this building. So this is the only one safe drawing from 1950s from the Institute of Polish Architecture in Faculty of Architecture at Warsaw University of, of uh, Technology. And um, 
with that semantics that we spoke about, we work in this kind of process. So as you see, we acquire data first. We then do a processing of data. We work on archiving, and I'm going to explain why archiving is very important here. We work on modeling, of course, uh, the most fun part, I would say, and then exporting data, so preparing all the information. So <clears throat> because uh, I'm, I'm moving this graph, why I'm doing that? Well, it's very simple because uh, it doesn't matter what kind of tools you use for uh, the, uh, you know, for measurements. This is your specific choice. Uh, there are people who will prefer to use Leica tools, people who will use Faro tools, and also people who will use other brands. It doesn't matter. What matters, of course, the quality of data that you're getting, that you're acquiring, and also how you're going to work with this uh, information. So how it's going to be processed. So first of all, after registration in the software, we export the external scans. So all of those, uh, you know, bubbles, the external scans uh, from the facade uh, to the reality capture. So from point cap to reality capture, we export E57 files. Why we do that? We do that because this, um, this software creates good uh, photogrammetry models, the reality capture. But uh, in order to keep a good scale with our models, we also use terrestrial laser scanning. So we get really good textures because that's very important for heritage assets. Uh, but uh, we also need to keep that in scale because pictures are not in scale when they being processed. So after that, we uh, export all the information again to the project. So from uh, the combined information from drone data and the TLS data. Uh, and uh, we also work on this uh, point cap project, uh, which serves us as a um, sort of place where we create documentation uh, for our actually working in uh, BIM uh, environment and also for archiving. So for creating this kind of 2D documentation, which many uh, people who works in conservatorship offices in municipalities, they still prefer. It's not like we have to digitize everything. There are people who are uh, specialists, art historians and conservators, uh, etc. And they are preferred to working in uh, 2D environment. And it's good to combine those two words. Uh, together. It's very simple in that regard. What we have, we have a little bit of magic here. We have uh, the for Archicad plugin to uh, point cap, and it's a really huge help for us. It's, it's a brand new product. Uh, and I'm speaking as a user <laughs> here because uh, it, uh, it was my, uh, on my wish list to uh, have this kind of uh, product because what it, what it does, and you're going to see it, it copies or it's synchronized all of the information that you create in your point cloud software into your BIM software. So in this regard, Archicad. So imagine you create a section and this section will appear in section space in Archicad, pretty neat. So then we of course model and we produce the specific repositories that are needed. Really quick about point cap. Uh, and point cap origins actually. Uh, so if you want to check uh, the company, just go to the website, Google point cap software is going to appear there. Uh, but uh, what this origin software does, uh, and it actually what the origins pro does, it registers data of any type. So if we have uh, drone data, if we have uh, laser scanning from TLS, from, uh, I don't know, handheld scanners, from iPad even, we can register all, all of that. Uh, there are tools for beginners and advanced users. Uh, I'm going to show you the simple uh, ways today, but they are very uh, resourceful and helpful. And uh, also uh, there are, um, let's say, automatic uh, creations of those views and sections, uh, tools for uh, condition analysis as well, uh, for example, for structural analysis. Uh, and uh, what is the best for me, because I'm a mixed user, that means I'm working on Windows and Mac. Uh, this is the only kind of application like this that works on Macintosh as well. So um, yeah, so I'm going to be showing you a Mac version. So what, what happens here, <clears throat> here is the example point cloud already in Archicad from uh, the, um, uh, the combination of terrestrial laser scanning as well as the 
um, um, the uh, drone data. Why uh, we do that? If you remember the beginning of the presentation, we cannot, um, from the ground, we will not see some parts of the roof, right? So that's why we uh, fly through with the drone and we wanted to combine this sort of um, this sort of uh, data for us and for conserv conservation office. So <clears throat> here, and this is very important, um, also why I like personally this software, this is my favorite function in a way, <laughs> that uh, for example, here you have a laser scanning project uh, and here you have a point cap project. So it's uh, actually pretty neat uh, if we're talking about data optimization. Uh, and it combines all data, this project. So this is only TLS, and this is uh, the um, TLS, SLAM, uh, and uh, the drone uh, photogrammetry model. So it's quite a lot, uh, quite, quite a specific, I would say, um, different difference uh, in, in data. Uh, so here, how does it work, this, uh, this software? So <clears throat> we do not work in 3D. We mostly work in this kind of documentation mode, but it doesn't mean you don't have the 3D. You still have, you are able to export. We do that all the time. We export our point clouds to ARCHICAD, but what is nice about that, it's organized. So as you see here, uh, you have this kind of job list, and this job list gives you the possibility to, well, to organize your work. So from sections, from elevations, um, uh, the, the floor plans, uh, the 3D, uh, kind of point cloud to also review it. You can do that. You can choose the specific pictures in your uh, point cloud uh, project. So, and do measurements as well. So, so it's really powerful. I'm not going to go through all of that, but just to showcase you the creation of, uh, of those uh, specific uh, views. So, for example, you want to create uh, the floor plan and the floor plan itself, uh, it, uh, it's being created in well, a couple of seconds. So uh, with that, uh, you are able to create any type of documentation and uh, thankfully uh, to the optimization, you are uh, able to move this data all along whatever you want. And because it's small uh, data, but you still have the full capacity of your 3D point cloud. And thus uh, you have the full detail here. So imagine that we can import point cloud to ARCHICAD with a low density because it's simple in this software and we also can archive all of that information in this specific project so we always can come back to this and we also can use it as an archive tool and uh, here we have uh, the uh, possibility to also create specific drawings specific worksheets uh, to send it to archicad uh, so combining of two words we have a really detailed 2d documentation and we have a 3d uh, documentation as well uh, with our 3D point cloud. So speaking about documentation, we use that and we move that into the um, into the ARCHICAD, of course. There is an automated process, which I'm going to show you in a second. We also do a 3D modeling uh, with uh, in extraction of information, data, and comparison of all of the resources. And then it can be produced to be um, specified, uh, you know, the historic, so to speak, archive uh, to, to be in the archive storage or whatever its uh, need and purpose uh, for the municipality. And uh, of course, this is one of the parts, but you also know BIMX as well. You all probably love BIMX uh, as I do, because I think this is one of the best tools for presentations. Um, and what is great, we the same documentation that we give, we have in this uh, open, sorry, in this BIMX format. And uh, what's happening here, it's uh, really uh, helpful for us to uh, sort of um, give it in more digital, uh, digital way. Doesn't mean we have uh, the, uh, you know, just documentation as you saw in this paper book, but we also have the 3D, so to speak, model. And that means in this 3D model, this simplified model, we are able to um, give a glimpse of idea of where those uh, cuts are, where uh, this documentation is, because BIMX do not provide you the possibility um, to export point clouds. I hope Graphsoft is listening. Uh, and uh, here we have, uh, well, all of those drawings and also all of those views in 3D, because we also can import that through, for example, Collada files. And uh, it can serve as this sort of 
digital asset in the beginning and it's really quick to create. So we get all of the information at once and we do not uh, focus on modeling that much. So this is kind of uh, what I like about this tool, uh, to, uh, to, about this tool, how it works. <clears throat> so Heritage BIM, speaking about that, we need to talk a little bit about level of information need. And why is that? Well, level of information need in general, it's level of geometry and level of information together. But it's not only that, level of information and actually the specific uh, norm like 17412-1, uh, uh, it, uh, it uh, has a specifics on uh, the information that needs the quality, quantity and granularity of information. So. Additionally, um, each project information deliverable, they needs to be determined based on its purpose. So depending on different projects and design phases, information can be actually varied from geometric information, alphanumeric information to exactly documentation. So we need to identify the purpose of information. We need to set delivery milestones. And we also need to be specific um, in, well, specifying actors or parties involved. Uh, last but not least, uh, it's very important to determine the kind of information and the method to be delivered. And I have to say this is a very fluent way to um, work with heritage buildings because uh, it gives us not this kind of, uh, of course, we have to shape it as some kind of uh, level one, two, three, four, etc. But at the same time, we get the information uh, regardless. So we can define, okay, for this specific building, because every building is different, uh, for this specific purpose, for this specific building, we need to acquire this kind of geometry for that room, and for that other room, we don't need this kind of geometry. Uh, and But we, for all the rooms, we will need the highest level of information. So that means all the semantic uh, documents that we can get and gather in this specific space that uh, we should use accordingly. So here you see on the graph, this is of course some kind of uh, um, model, some kind of uh, idea in a way uh, of uh, how this representation can work. We also added the raw data, and that means this is some of the uh, our segmented point cloud down in point cap. So we have a specific accuracy, we have um, coded this element accordingly to the needs and the purposes. So we have a column capital, shaft, and the column base as well. Uh, and uh, with that, we also create all of the um, levels, all of the uh, different uh, graphics. Uh, so, the, uh, of course, with all of those 3D models, uh, it uh, is specific for us to um, put additional information inside of the classification. So, <clears throat> We can actually add this information. We can actually uh, use uh, the open bin power here uh, to create uh, an Archicad's classification and properties uh, to use this power and to um, put all of the data that we actually want and need there. And speaking about this information, here is just an example of um, it, it was a test basically, but it how it can work uh, for uh, for your specific purposes or it works for ours. Uh, so we can use a different uh, national classification. Uh, they are of course non-digitized. <laughs> it's uh, strictly there are no XML provided. Uh, but uh, I'm not speaking about building classification. I'm speaking about the or construction classification. I'm speaking about heritage classification. Uh, so in this case, it's a UK Historic Environment Data Standard, and in that kind of standard, we uh, kind of used it uh, as a template uh, to understand how this building can uh, have um, you know inputted uh, data inside. So as you can see uh, in our uh, section of classification and properties, we have a heritage BIM classification and we want to define the authenticity, authenticity of the, uh, for the monument. So uh, you can see those specific uh, tables and uh, timelines and properties here, which are going to be exported, of course, to the IFC file. And uh, how does it work also? Because the, I love data. I love working with, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to say Excel because no, but with databases and creating them. For me, this is a clear fun to create uh, databases like that. And uh, we also use, as I mentioned before, graphical overrides because this is very well visual and uh, people like visual. And uh, this explains a lot. This explains how this classification work and how it can work through the whole life cycle of design with the export of every IFC iteration, right? So we can define whether the element is original or not, or later on, if item is already after the renovation. This, this is just an example, but you get the point. So <clears throat> here, just uh, different 
So here, just different um, um, the representations of this sort of level of information need, uh, and according to the heritage uh, object, so we can go into classification again and have uh, specific heritage resources uh, and spatial data in that case. So it's good for spatial zoning as well as uh, coordinating. It creates general views uh, of the building, easy to add another database entry, and it's mostly for urban scale. Yeah, next we have this uh, kind of um, uh, the higher level, let's say. So this is output scale 1 to 100. Uh, and it's complete it's schematic representation. There is no representation of deformations mostly, but uh, it positions and sides of wall openings. So it's uh, floor and roof truss, heights and wall and ceiling thicknesses. So it's good for actually starting to uh, working on uh, this uh, specific building. So to analyze it uh, from the maybe structural uh, level. Uh, and also, of course, the glorious classification is there and we can uh, define all of the things that we want in our classification system, but also in Archicad, which you all already are familiar with. And uh, of course, uh, the, the higher we go, the, the more modeling we have to do, the more time we have to spend on it. But it's very um, fruitful, I would say, at the end, and it and gives a lot of information and data as well. So in that regard, we're getting into output scale to 150, 1 to 25, 1 to 10, according to what we actually need. It is a complete representation. It's accurate. It's defamation true allowance. It's uh, have a measurements accuracy around, um, or it should actually, around two, two and a half centimeters. Uh, detection of deformation, uh, structural damage, uh, and uh, also structural and soffit of ceiling structures and construction floors and uh, any construction joints. Uh, carpenters and stonemason marks, um, detailed drawings in, in large scale. Uh, that means uh, all of the uh, you know information whenever we want, we can zoom in and actually get the, the details. So this 3D modeling that we did in the beginning is paint back with uh, all the data. Uh, as well as again, the classification, this is the most important part for this kind of buildings. And last but not least, this raw data. Thanks to uh, segmentation, manual segmentation that you can do in, for example, point cap. Uh, we uh, have the material, which is raw material. It's an output scale one to one. You also saw orthophoto maps that you can have uh, the exact deformation true allowance. Uh, you have measurement accuracy plus one centimeter, let's say, because of the you know how we read the the element. Of course, we can input more points, but uh, is it necessary? That's the question. Uh, for some parts, maybe yes. There is a detection of uh, deformation because it's all natural as it was captured by the laser scanner. Uh, and uh, all of the previous uh, that uh, models that were created, they were used with, uh, with combination of scanning and uh, then uh, being modeled out of this uh, laser scan. So uh, the cherry on the top is, of course, the uh, OpenBIM data. Uh, because uh, we cannot uh, input the IFC files into the IFC files, the uh, point clouds, there are, of course, possibilities that review them. Uh, and it's uh, available on some common data environments. It's available on some viewers. Here is, for example, BIM Collab Zoom. And uh, with combination of E57, that was segmented in your archived project in PointCap, you can input the same data that you input it in every single space. So it's all organized uh, in, in well matter, and at the same time having this classification going through and giving that to whoever actor uh, needs this information. So now we can conclude the part of the um, presentation. And uh, I will move forward into the uh, actual software. So uh, for a quick uh, for a quick presentation, how this connection works and how this documentation can be quickly created. So here, as you can see, this is Archicad. We have uh, the uh, model already modeled from Point Cloud. This is another project. But uh, what is interesting, we of course, uh, because of the folders from Archicad 26, we can uh, have uh, the specific point clouds organized. So in this case, uh, we have a separate folder for this kind of outside data. And uh, here I have uh, just two data sets of, of the clouds. As you can see, we have all the elevations, but here I also have the internals. So I'm gonna just disable the elevation here. Yeah. So I can go now inside and um, basically uh, see how the details are modeled here. So, uh, of course, this is uh, used not only with uh, points. The points is one thing, as I said. Uh, 3D uh, information is really important. This is a decimated cloud, so there's not that much of the points uh, themselves, but there's a lot of uh, drawings created for this specific purpose. 
So in point cap, you can create all of the views that you need. So instead of importing very heavy point clouds, you can import the decimated cloud as we did here and then uh, modeled the entire, uh, let's say, m the entire building uh, which was needed in very um, robust detail, I would say. So uh, all of that information is there and uh, it's, uh, well, how it should be because it's, uh, just captured as it, as it is from the point cloud, so as the, as the original state of the building. So how we can actually import drawings, how we can actually create specific drawings. <clears throat> so here I already have uh, two drawings inputted, so each of that uh, elevation was created automatically and it gave me the possibility to um, have, uh, you know, the views that has the model but also have the um, the point cap uh, view. So that means I will have the orthophoto map, which is quite detailed, and I will also have the view, which is uh, generated from the model, right? So, uh, of course, this uh, is very um, time consuming in most cases, the model loading uh, in uh, with the high detail because there is a lot of information, but uh, it works uh, quite smoothly, uh, specifically on Apple Silicon. Uh, I have to say. And uh, so, so the same views are being generated for uh, later on for the documentation for Orthophotos, which is also a nice comparison for the client and for municipality to see uh, how much detail uh, there was. So there might be, for example, a very simplified model and at the same time uh, point cap uh, can have uh, the full representation, right? So every single um, view that you want to create. So let's say I'm going to create a new view and that means I'm going to open also point cap. <clears throat> so I will have point cap on the left and the archicad on the right. So what's going to happen now, I will need to activate uh, license for the plugin. And uh, here I have my floor plan, the, the zero ground level. Uh, and here I have point cloud already um, measured and already in the same coordinate system. So. Uh, my coordinate system from a point cap project is being used in the Archicad. So with that information, I'm able in very quick regard uh, to um, create those views and, and they are in correct position. I also have activated the 4CAD connect to make the software talk to each other. So <laughs> here, what are we going to do? In Archicad, uh, I will go to Orthophotos window. So the orthophotos window, those are all orthophotos that are visible here, that were created. So I'm going to create a new one. And you see the there's only like six of them, the same as here. So I'm going to create a new orthophoto. And let's say I will want to create the new, um, the brand new uh, elevation. So I'm creating an elevation view. I will uh, create it like this. And so this cut will be understood and remembered in Archicad. And uh, I will just uh, choose the exterior scans because I can quickly do that. And let's say I'm gonna rename it. It's gonna be uh, named second elevation just for our purpose. So uh, here I'm clicking play and it's uh, counting all the scans and it's uh, trying to give us the uh, 2D information from a 3D point cloud as we want. So as you see, I'm building this sort of documentation. In the meantime, I can, of course, do other stuff. I can view through other uh, pictures and drawings uh, that I have. And also I can uh, start to export the 3D point cloud. So this is very simple. You select what you want, uh, for example, like this. You can say what kind of detail you want, so uh, how dense the point cloud will be, the format, the scan radius, if it's going to be color, it don't need a color, and which scans are should, should be taken into care. So we have specific clusters with colors like here. Uh, so this can be used fully. But I, I can see my elevation is already done. So I see uh, the orthophoto map ready, but when I'm here, I already see that, right? So what I'm going to do, I can create a new um, sheet name, so I know where it's going to be. I will reference it to the new elevation, because I'm creating an elevation, and it's going to be named like my drawing in point cap, so this is very useful to create you know, the good naming conventions. 
for example, regarding ISO. And I can choose a specific layer, right? In this case, uh, I'm just going to use uh, the, uh, the layer for point cap. And uh, here I just click and it's done. And it's already created. It already gave me view and it already created uh, the view in a project map. So as you can see, it's already elevation, but what's fun, the same view is here. And uh, the good thing about that is uh, it's oriented in uh, according to the same XYZ coordinate. And we also getting the drawing as well. So we can start to see the full detail. So with that kind of ready to go views, what we can do, and that's what is uh, very useful, we can create a documentation and this documentation can actually be really uh, well quickly done because if you have good templates and I'm sure you have uh, if not then this is a time to do that uh, and you can actually um, start to uh, create your own uh, views create your own documentation very quickly because uh, all of that data is done in seconds as you saw so this is just uh, the technological sneak peek of what we spoke before, but I think it's uh, quite uh, useful for your case. And uh, speaking of uh, point clouds, because I said I have a couple of point clouds already there. So let's go to the 3D view. And with the 3D view, uh, I have, of course, different layers and those different layers uh, have different point clouds, so with different kind of um, detail, right? So we have all the same layers, but uh, the information about the detail of the cloud is there. So if I have the elevation with one centimeter or one millimeter interior or uh, five millimeters elevation and so on and so forth. So all of that data can be just, um, you know, put it in and out. So for example, urban, I have five centimeters in elevation. I have very detailed. So you will see the difference. And there it is. So uh, the scan outside is not so detailed. You can tell by this. And this scan is already very detailed. So it's uh, much more denser. If I'm going to just hide this layer, you will see the difference. Yeah. So that's what you can really, really quickly let's say, get from uh, the point cap itself uh, to have this sort of archive of the project and to have all of that information in one space. Um, and because of this connection, it's very quick to uh, jump from this uh, documentation or data management to actually working on, on the project. <clears throat> so I would like to thank you very much for uh, listening and being here. And I hope uh, that time was usefully spent. Um, and, and if you want to reach us, if you want to, maybe you will need uh, some kind of training or you maybe you will need uh, some kind of guidance in regards of the, uh, you know, how to work with point clouds. Or maybe you want to talk about point cap itself. Just let us know. Let me know. And I will be more than happy to uh, talk uh, to you about all of that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan, for having me here again and uh, wishing all the best to uh, other um, presenters. So take care, have a good day, good night, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are. Bye-bye.